Where's your crown? Hey, this is Holly, and today we're going to be learning about poisonous plants. So we're I'm so excited to introduce you to the Payne family Shakespearean players. They will be, um, I'll introduce you to them now, and then we're going to be having a drama later where they show how Shakespeare used poison throughout many of his plays. So come on over, guys, and let's introduce, this is the mom, this is Amy. Mm -hmm. One of my dear friends and quite an author. She's written so many plant poems that would blow your mind. Okay, and this is Ben. And Ben, what part are you playing today? Laertes. What is your actor? Laertes. Laertes. Laertes, okay. And what are you doing? Okay, this is Gideon. And Gideon, what happened to your face today? Um, I got weekend? poison ivy while we were camping a couple days ago. Just so. He was just in time for this class, right, buddy? And thank you so much. And Eli, and this is Eli. And what are you dressed up as? I'm dressed up as the pr as the prince. The prince. And what are you? I forgot to ask. I'm the king and the apothecary. Okay, the poison maker. Sounds good. All right. Well, we'll be. I'll be calling you guys back up in just a minute. But why don't you stay here for a second? Because I want to show you. We always start our class with herbing around. And so this is garlic, uh, wild garlic seeds. And so the guys are gonna take these wild garlic seeds and they're going to, each of you get a little tiny bowl and you're gonna go sit back over there, um, not right this second, but in a minute. And you're just gonna, look at what I'm doing. You're just gonna break these up so that they're nice and see all those seeds, aren't they cool? Okay, then you can take this and put this in the compost bin, which is right by your feet. All right, so you're gonna be doing that. So this is what they look like, guys. And then we're going to be making a guacamole. We're having a wild fiesta for lunch, okay? So they're going to be making a guacamole with, with these and also with some purslane, which they picked for us. Where did you find the purslane? Oh, in our, our garden. garden. In your garden. Do you like it better than the other vegetables? <laughs> Yeah. Like, I, do too. I, like I, like question. <laughs> I am leading the witness. I like raspberries the best in our garden. Okay. All right. Well, you can come get this in just a minute. But I also wanted to show you another thing we're going to do. We're not actually doing a cooking demo today because we have so much we're going to be covering. It's so excited about it. But it's Ben's birthday tomorrow. And how old are you going to be, buddy? Ten. 10. So we're celebrating. And um, so I made some gluten free vanilla cupcakes and this is um, some butter cream coconut cream icing so you guys are going to each take one of these plates over here and Amy I'll just make sure that you take care of all this all right and you're going to take these over not now but in a minute and each of you gets to put one of these on your plate and then cover it with icing and then what do you think I'm going to ask you to do cover it with flowers what kind of flowers um, poisonous flowers no no, no? Why not? Because they'd poison you. <laughs> How do you know the difference, though? How do you know which ones are good? Well, that's why you're at class. And you guys are going to help me teach, right? Right. Yep, absolutely. So you got your plan. Mm -hmm. You're going to be de-seeding the wild garlic. And you're going to be icing. Or mommy could ice them if you'd prefer. And then at the end of class, I want to have you show me what you did. So everyone's going to come and show their um, cupcake. Okay? So take this over there and just to get out of the way and then get this out of the way too and then stay here because i'm going to give you a drink everyone's going to drink something so this um throughout history uh, poisonous plants have been used to um alter drinks and i guess it is still today it's a very dangerous and very evil thing to do so guys do you think i've altered this drink no no i wouldn't do that or would i okay so this is grape wild kefir so the kefir grains are oops really good for your gut health would you like to try some eli yes please 
Okay, well, I should serve the king first. So, Gideon is the king. I'm here you three. go, Mr. King. Where's your crown? Right now in the apothecary. Oh, okay. Well, don't put any poison in there. Um, did you all watch that clip by the Princess Bride of the Princess Bride of the Battle of the Wits? No. So we will sh see who is who drinks and who is dead. Well, that sounds really <laughs> encouraging, like a great idea. Let's. That was see. a quote. Actually, Let's, if Kendall was here, she could quote it verbatim because it's just, just who she let's is. Let's see who drops over first. And let's give some to Mr. Drake, okay? Does it taste good? Yes. Yeah? Let's okay, so I love now. using water kefirs because it actually is such a healthy way to drink a soda. That turned out very well. Oh, good. I, like it. Yeah. I wanted to tell you that grapes are kind of flaunting their future uh, bounty right now. So this is grapes from a previous season, but the grapes are really tiny, but the clusters are beginning to blossom, not blossom, but just virgin and get fatter and fatter. And so I'm keeping my eyes on them. So I think you should as well. So do I have anyone to cheers with? Yes. Okay, thank you for coming and thank you for helping thank me. For having so much fun. Okay. So you got your marching orders? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in just a few seconds, I'm going to have you guys go over there and, and uh, perform. But first, I wanted to talk about some welcomes. So I welcomed you all. Thank you for coming. And we're going to have so much fun together today. Um, and I wanted to also welcome our new members. So Jan Morrow, I know you just, you just joined, so I'm very excited. I'm excited about all of you that have joined. I haven't even had the moment to see how many are on are now in our um, group, but I think it's over 220. So that's so exciting to me. Thank you. And I hope you shared with someone to spread wildfires. Um, also, I wanted to thank you for posting pictures of what you were eating this week. Suzanne Upton, you are the real deal. You are so amazing. I want to come eat at your house. So thank you for posting. Thank you for inspiring us. Um, and let's inspire each other. And then I wanted to also just brag on myself that I actually did my first iMovie, The Forge to Feast with My Wild Fiesta from June 26. Did you get to watch it? I, I mean, that was so much work. It was like giving birth to a unicorn, but it was, I think, worth it. And it'll show you what it is I've done hundred, many, many times, probably a hundred times over these many years. Um, always a different cuisine. My next one will be an Asian cuisine. I don't know the exact date. I had said it would be this weekend, but things have come up and I have to cancel that. This weekend is postponed. Um, but keep keep an eye out for that. And the winner of the rose roller, I don't know because I haven't had a moment to get on the computer and have the computer tell me. So I will let you know tonight who won the rose ro roller. So that will be exciting. So if you comment, you'll have a chance to win something. And this week um, I'm giving away this ramp salt that is made with ramps and uh, what did I do? I think it's let me smell it. You smell it. Tell me what this is. Is this a uh, lime or lemon? Lime. Lime. Okay. This is ramp lime salt. Okay. So when you comment and you ask a question, it makes me feel like you're actually there. So even if you're not watching it live, you can come back and watch it later and comment below and say, wow, I can't wait to learn about this or that, or this was fun, or um, I want the ramp salt, or whatever, and all of your names gets into a computer generator, and then I get to um, the computer selects who wins. So that'll be for next week. All right. So the poisonous folly of plant dramas from Shakespeare, and I'm going to just let Amy take it from here. Okay. okay. Well, can we stand with, can Gideon and I, the apothecary, and I stand with you for a moment while the king and Laertes head over there? Absolutely. Just make sure you go around this way so yeah. you don't trip. And get your, um, get your crown. But he's, the oh, he's the apothecary yeah. right now. Oh, okay. So he's, we were just I'm, going I'm, to I'm show waiting. you because Miss Holly had asked us, first of all, about Romeo and Juliet um, being a classic you know, poisoning scene that we have there. And so we were thinking about just different times in Shakespeare that poisons are used, or a lot of the times plants are used, of course, but not always for poisoning. And um, in Romeo and Juliet, the friar is quite knowledgeable about plants. And so he sometimes, one of his famous lines in Act Two, 
he has a flower. He's kind of, he's herbing around, if you will. And he's doing his thing. He's got his basket of plants. And he says, within the infant rind of this weak flower, poison hath residence and medicine power for this being smelt with that part cheers each part, but being tasted stays all senses with the heart. So the friar knows that there is good medicinal use and sometimes danger at the same time within certain flowers even. And then when Juliet, who has already secretly married Romeo, finds out that now she has to marry Count Paris, of course she's distraught and she goes running to the friar who gives her <clears throat> a little vial of medicine. And he says, this is something that's going to make it like you're in a coma, basically. And he says, you will be stiff and stark and cold and appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and 40 hours and then awake as if from a pleasant sleep. So I don't know how the friar knew how to make this concoction that would put you to sleep for exactly 42 hours, like a very long, lovely nap. Uh, but apparently he did. And then when Romeo does not get the news that she's just sleeping and not dead, he panics and remembers this poor old apothecary that he saw once in Mantua. And so he goes to him and he thinks about, you know, his condition. He would probably be willing to sell him the poison, even though it might mean death for the apothecary. So he says, noting this penury, I said to myself, if a man did me poison now, whose cell is present death in Mantua? Here lives the wretch who would sell it to him. So, Apothecary, can you step over? Here's your... And we thought we would just give you a very small scene from Romeo and Juliet for Miss Holly from that. So as I remember, I'm Romeo. This should be the house. What ho, Apothecary? Who calls so loud? Come hither, man. Oh, I see that thou art poor. Here. There is 40 ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gears will disperse itself through all the veins that the life weary taker may fall dead and that the trunk may be discharged of breath. This mortal drugs I have a man to his law's death to any that utters them. Take this. Put this in any liquid and drink it off. And if you had the strength of 20 men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. Worse poison than this to men's soul. And he goes to Juliet's grave with the, with the poison that he now calls a cordial. Thank you, Apothecary. You can get dressed. So that's our scene from Romeo and Juliet. There, no one knows for sure what the poisons might have been. Um, there's speculation that Juliet's um, poison that put her to sleep was perhaps Belladonna or, or Deadly Nightshade. And then Romeo, perhaps it was Medieval Monkshood that he ingested but we'll go get set up for our scene from Hamlet which we discovered as we were going through this Hamlet has a lot of poisoning it actually has more poisoning than Romeo and Juliet and spoiler alert by the end of this scene everyone is dead from poison <laughs> so we thought this might be a good one for today. The play even begins with the ghost of Hamlet coming out and explaining that he was killed by his brother Claudius who dripped poison in his ear as he lay sleeping outside. So now Claudius is king. He's married Queen Gertrude. Hamlet um, and Laertes. Laertes is Ophelia's brother. Uh, Hamlet the prince. They're about to have um, a fencing match. And so that's where we are in the king's castle. Thank you. What do you want me to say? Well, I'm just going to, we're setting up a scene. Okay. I thought you might. Oh, okay. I'll talk about um, our Bible verse, our memory work for today. It's Ephesians 5, 15, which says, Be careful then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. And I thought that was absolutely perfect because of our topic today on poisonous plants. So be careful then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. So um, I'll be sending out the poster and you can print that out on cardstock. And the boys today are gonna actually um, decorate this with poisonous flowers. And um, so I'm excited about that. Are you ready? I think so. 
Okay. Wow, the king looks pretty spiffy. Let the fencing begin. Come, sir. Come on. Ah, a hit for Hamlet. Stay, give, stay, give me a drink. Give me a drink. Stay, give me a drink. This pearl is thine. Here's to thy health. Give him a cup. I shall play some more. Oh, here, Hamlet, take thy napkin, rub thy brows. The queen carouses to thy good fortune, Hamlet. Gertrude, do not drink. I, I will, my lord, I pray thee, give me your forgiveness. It is the poison cup, it is too late. Play on. Ah, oh, Laertes gets Hamlet. And in the scuffle, they drop their swords and pick up the wrong ones. Ah, oh, good. Another hit for Hamlet. Oh. Oh. Laertes. You say. I'm just like Gilbert, my own treachery. The drink, Hamlet, the drink, the drink. Tis poison, Hamlet, tis poison. It is here, Hamlet, thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do thee good. You have half an hour to live. The poison is on the blade, the king. The king is blank. The point is poison too, then venom to thy work. Here, drink off this potion. Follow my mother. <laughs> That's fair. The king was responsible for the poison himself. <laughs> <laughs> Max, come. Max. Max wants some poison. Come, Max. Tell my story. Okay, dead people, arise. Yeah. So we forgot to clarify for you that the point of Laertes' sword was also poison. So hopefully you got that. There was poison in the drink. Poison on the sword, and well, no one left at the end of the play. <sighs> so it's Hamlet's innocent. good friend who will go and tell his story. Thank you. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, so are you guys ready to herb around? All right, then Benjamin, come on over around this way, honey, and grab the um, grab this. And so if you could do this, and here's the little bowls to put it in, huh? And you can also work on the... Um, I forgot one thing, can they show it? Oh, yes, come on over and show that. Okay. That was so wonderful, thank Just you so much. Okay, so um, a lot of these poisons that are referenced in Shakespeare's plays are not common plants that we keep in our home cabinets right now. I mean, we don't really know why people had these poisonous concoctions lurking in their home, but... The boys and I did do a little tour just around our house, in our yard, right by the house, and we found a number of poisonous plants that you can be on the watch for yourself. So if you would take a plant and just show them. So they made these signs to make it clear. These are dangerous plants to watch for. Wow, that's awesome. Can you hand me my phone? I might get a picture of that. All right, so Ben, you start. Spurge has milky white, 
come out. It's thin it, and it lays flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. And purslane, purslane? Purslane's right there. This has a thicker stem and it doesn't have white stuff. So purslane's okay. Spurge, not okay. Right. Right? Yeah. Okay. And spurge has been known to kill sheep. Mm -hmm. It's very toxic. And what's your other poison plant? And poison ivy. Wow. That's fantastic. The oil on it makes you itchy. It sure does. Okay. Thank you so much. What do you have? I have um, bittersweet. The, all of it, it, all bittersweet is poisonous. Mm -hmm. None of it you can eat. And rhubarb. Mm -hmm. the le only the leaf on rhubarb is poisonous. Because people eat rhubarb, don't they? Yes. I, I have oxalis or wood sorrel. Um, the seed pods that um, kind of look like bananas and are really sweet. If you eat too many of them, they're poisonous. Mm -hmm. And they're bad for your, your liver. Because they're making because it makes there too much oxalic acid. Good. So you can have a little bit of the wood sorrel, right? But not too much. That's why this one just says danger mm -hmm. and not poison. And what about this one? Lily of the Valley Ooh. looks like it looks like ramp, but it's very toxic. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And it's got those two leaves coming off, right? Yeah. Wow, yeah, that too. artwork's so these awesome. These are some just around the house you might see, even things like rhododendron that grow around here. Right. We have to be careful what we ingest. One of the things I wanted to say while you guys are still here is that children are the ones that are the most likely to get poisoned, and it's because they are more trusting. And they, if so, it's good, it's really good for you to teach, to find out what you have on your land and then have your kids learn with you teach them what things are toxic and what things are edible so that they are 100% sure. Like to do what they did is just super smart. Another thing is a lot of landscaping uh, plants are toxic like rhododendrons are toxic and azaleas. And we love them because they're beautiful, but they can kill you. And even the honey made from the rhododendron flowers from bees is called mad honey because it can actually make you go crazy. And so the Turks were, this is another history story, is that the Turks were uh, freaked out because the Romans were coming to take over. And what they did is they yeah. took mad honey from made from rhododendrons and they put it along the roads where the Roman soldiers were coming, big bunches of it. And the soldiers could not resist the sweetness, so they would eat it, and they went. They could. They were easily conquered. So the Turks were able to conquer the Romans and keep them from coming into their territory. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's so important with children. Let me let me finish my other children thoughts while you guys are standing here. Um, find out what's in your yard and teach them. Um, yeah, I guess that's basically it. But and be a hundred percent sure of what you're putting in your mouth when in doubt. Don't leave it out, okay? When in doubt, leave it out. Okay, you guys can take this over and finish this off. And I'll see you at the end when you've decorated with flowers. And if you wanna take, um, like these are, let's talk about what's edible here. The butterfly weed is not edible, but the um, these, these petals of the black-eyed Susans you can take off. And you can also take these bee balm petals and decorate with those as well. So you can just come over and get those when you're ready for it. Okay, guys? All right. That was so great. Thank you so much, Amy and my Shakespearean players. All right. So let's go back over some things about poisonous plant effects. So the things that can happen to you are, there's three things that can happen. The first is that by touching a certain plant, it can cause a rash or some, it's called contact dermatitis. So here we have, um, this is called field parsnip. And if you were to just uh, be sweaty and running through a field of this and they grow in huge co colonies, you would end up having a rash that makes poison ivy rash feel like nothing. It's, it's very toxic to, um, to get on your skin, especially when your pores are wide open from sweating and in the sun. And so it, there can be some serious problems. Well, the problem with that is that this is an amazingly edible plant. This root 
has been used, it's used now as the common parsnip. This is the exact same plant that we buy at Earth Fair or in the grocery store. It used to be a huge part of everyone's diet centuries ago, whereas now there's just very little section of the store where you can find parsnips. So, but they taste delicious. Um, they're smaller, the wild ones are smaller than the ones that you'll find cultivated in a garden. Um, so you see these, you'll see them all the rest of the summer. They've just popped up and they're just absolutely beautiful. Um, they're kind of like a yellowy green floral flower. Humble. So it's in the APACA family. Most of the uh, really, really dangerous poisons are in the APACA family, which is the parsley family or the carrot family. Okay, so that's one way is through contact dermatitis. Another one is photosensitivity. Some plants, when you get them on you and then you go into the sun, can cause a burn. So one of those is St. John's wort. If you were to um, ingest that even, it, then just don't um, go into the sun because it can cause a burn or lemon oil, essential oil, wherever you put some of these photosensitive um, essential oils on your skin, it can actually cause a burn. <clears throat> so that's another way that the plant toxins can affect you. Um, okay, then inhalation is another. So the first was <clears throat> contact dermatitis and then the uh, second one, and that would be like poison ivy, poison... Um, um, oak, poison sumac, um, things that when you touch them, or like this water parsley or field parsley. Okay, parsnip. So then inhalation is the next one. And so for example, if you were to have a lot of poison ivy in a bonfire, and you were to inhale that into your lungs, it can cause enormous um, lung damage to your lungs. And so um, I have spent many hours eradicating my land of poison ivy, but it seems like the more I do that, the more it comes back. It just has a way of wanting to guard itself and spread. It spreads by seeds, and um, the little fruits are white that the birds love. So if I were to take that and put it into my burn pile, that would have not been a wise thing. So um, one of the things you can do to kill poison ivy is to just make a um, concoction of white vinegar and water. And it's the ratio is um, <clears throat> uh, one, like 20% of the um, white vinegar and the rest with water. And that will help to kill the poison ivy. And we're going to do a lot where we talk about these poison ivy in great detail. But I just wanted to let you know that if you're interested in doing that, that's the best thing that you can do to eradicate poison ivy because I've ripped it up. But if you rip it up and you want to put it into 40 gallon trash bags, um, the rhizomes that go, they're not really rhizomes, they're like vines that go under the ground. They just rip up and they pull off the trees. You pour them into a trash bag and throw them into the trash rather than burning them because that can cause great damage to your lungs. Another thing that you can inhale that's dangerous is pollen. So pollen from poison hemlock can be really dangerous, especially if you're trying to eradicate it and cut it down and get rid of it off of your land. When it's pollen, when it's, the pollen is present, that can also be poisonous. Um, Linda Runyon is my precious mentor and friend, and she told me the story of how her son, um, they lived off the wild in the Adirondack Mountains, for 13 years and he loved Queen Anne's lace cookies. And so she would fry them up for him over her campfire. And so he collected a whole bunch of them and he had them in his arms. He had a t-shirt on, it was a hot day. And as he was coming to her from far away, she could see that these were not Queen Anne's lace. It was actually poison hemlock. So she's a nurse and, um, or was a nurse and so she, she knew that uh, this is beyond me. So she got what herbs she knew that could help. And she put him in the truck and they drove, I can't remember, 60 miles or something to the nearest hospital. And um, his skin was literally, I think he was like eight at the time, was literally falling off of his arm. And that was just from the stomatas in his arm with the poisonous plant. So it's so important to have 100% identification, especially to teach your children. And if your children are not part of Teaching Tuesday, I, I welcome you. It's a free class, and I would absolutely 
love to have them join us. Share this. Share share the share yeah. the link with others. Who I homeschooled. Yeah. For yes. we homeschooled for years, and I would have loved to have had a class like this for my kiddos. Um, all right. So the next way that you can be poisoned uh, is with ingestion. So that's just really common sense. Just don't put it in your mouth. If it's, um, if there's any doubt, you have to be 150% sure of what it is you're consuming. And then mechanical injury, and that can happen through thorns or cactus prickles, or I can't remember what they're called, but I remember one time I had collected, um, what are they, they're in San Diego, they're just the most amazing cactus, and I made jelly out of it, glycosite, gly well, anyway. Um, so I collected these beautiful fruits, they were kind of purple. I know, Cindy, you know what I'm talking about. It's just skipped my memory, but I put them into my purse, and then I flew up to San Francisco to see my son and I carry, had that purse. And by then I'd already made the jelly and I'd been very careful not to get the spines in my hands. And I reached into my purse and all of those spines went on my hand. And so the entire time I was with Brian up in San Francisco, I felt like a porcupine and it's very hard to get them out. So that's another way. So it's mechanical or stinging nettle. That's another way because of the stinging hypodermic needles that have that poison that they put into your skin, which can actually be therapeutic as well. So a lot of these poisons are actually medicinal um, if used in a small amount. So for example, stinging nettle is a good example of that. Um, don't forget, nettle in, dock out. So if you get stung with stinging nettle, the yellow dock, the antidote is usually right next to it or really close by. And so yellow dock is very juicy. Just break up those cell walls and roll it over where you got your sting and it will really neutralize that impact. Okay, so throughout history, um, the poisonous plants have been a guarded secret. So as soon as they learned about it, <laughs> the mind of man learned ways that they could uh, use it for warfare, use it for hunting, use it for evil, um, and also for medicine. So some of the things that have happened in the past were um, they would, here I've got my paper right here. I wanna make sure I share this correctly. Um, so royalty would have taste testers. This is what you should have had, King. Where's the King? You should have had a taste tester. Um, and although you were the one who was doing the evil deed. <laughs> so the taste testers were just some poor bloke that was given the privilege of tasting the king's food before the king actually consumed it so that if it had been poisoned by someone who was trying to eliminate him, then the, um, he would be killed and the king would be fine. And then also it was used as a um, succession powder. So the poisons were used to guarantee moving up the line of succession. And there was just a lot of jealousy between brothers. And so even though Benjamin is the oldest brother in the family, like say they were royalty, that if he was worried that maybe Eli or Gideon were going to take over his throne one day, then he might use a poisonous plant to try to eliminate his brothers. And I know you would never do that, but just saying, that's what happened. Um, so knowledge of poisonous plants has been one used to put into a position of power, and it's been secrets that have been carried on for generations. Um, success, then execution, they were used for execution. So Socrates was killed. Um, he chose his way of dying, and his, his choice was poison hemlock. So Jason and I went last night looking for poison hemlock, and uh, we didn't come back with any, but I do know exactly where there is. So next week when I talk about the um, APACA family and all of the poisonous plants in the carrot family, and I'm going to go into a great deal of detail next week on that, then we will have actual poison hemlock here to show you as well as a slideshow. So um, that is probably one of the most poisonous plants. And the way it kills you is it paralyzes your 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 body. So starting at your farthest extremities, it'll work its way up until it gets all the way up to your heart and your heart muscle stops. So interestingly, Plato and Credo were his um, uh, apprentices and his students, and he was just talking to them until and telling them what his, was happening to his body as it was happening. And then when it hit his heart, he stopped talking. 
So that was a kind of, it's a peaceful way to die compared to water hemlock, which is an extremely violent way to die. And we'll talk about that next week. Okay, so executions where poisons were used for that. So then um, how can we, um, some practical points I wanted to talk about, because this is kind of like, by now you might be thinking, I don't want to learn about wild edible plants because this sounds like dangerous stuff. But really, it's, it's not very common. There aren't that many plants that are poisonous. And yet, all of them are poisonous. And what I mean by that is there's not a huge dichotomy between poisonous and edible. For example, it's kind of like there's just poles. So there's like the poison hemlock that is extremely poisonous. The whole plant is poisonous. And then there's the apple tree. And those seeds are poisonous, okay? But the apples, you would never say, well, I'll never eat an apple again because you know, Snow White, no, because those seeds are poisonous. Well, so what? Just get rid of the seeds. So it's important to realize that there is edibleness and poisonness in almost every single plant. Aren't you referring a lot, though, to toxicity and levels of it? Absolutely, because there's chemicals in each plant. There's micronutrients and there's vitamins and minerals, and there's also some chemicals that if you take them not in moderation, if you take too much, like who was it that was telling us about oxalis? Which one of you? Was it Eli? He was telling us that oxalis is a wonderful edible plant. In fact, we'll be eating it today for lunch. I love it. But if you eat too much, it can really affect your kidneys and your liver. So, um, you know, it's, it's a matter of moderation. For example, we've, our bodies, we're supposed to be in tune with our bodies and how they're responding to what we eat. And honestly, I think we've kind of lost that ability. And so we'll talk about that in just a minute. It's called organoleptic knowledge and wisdom. So don't walk as unwise men, but as wise. So another example of um, this dichotomy is that um, parts of the plant might be toxic. So for example, this is a potato. These little spuds are toxic. But how many of you would stop eating potatoes just because the spuds are toxic? Or sometimes have you ever seen on a potato where it's green? That is this chemical that is toxic. Well, just cut that part off, okay? So you can get rid of rinds of poisonous parts of plants, or you would never eat a banana peel, or maybe you would, I don't know. I don't think that's actually toxic. It's just not palatable. Um, but all of the above ground parts of a potato are toxic. And we all love tomatoes. I don't know where my tomato went. It's right here. This is my first tomato in my garden. I'm so excited. Um, we'll eat it for lunch today, guys. So tomatoes are amazing, but they're in the nightshade family and the leaves are toxic. So just learning what part of the plant is edible and what part of the plant is poisonous is really important because God is in the details and that's part of your journey. And so you don't have to be an expert. You just have to be an expert in the plants that you're using and that you're consuming. And it doesn't take a lot to do that, but it takes experience. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. All right. So, oh, I forgot to tell you in, in the, um, this is pretty cool. Where's your necklace with the Buckeyes? Who was wearing that? Was that the king? Can you hand that to me, Amy? <laughs> this is pretty awesome. Thank you, buddy. Um, so these poisons were used, going back to history now, I'm sorry, we're going back because I forgot. Thank you so much. Um, this is buckeye, and buckeye is toxic. And do you know the, in, the American Indians or Native Americans used to use these, um, these seeds? And let's see, where's, oh, but here's, here's the pod that it grows in. And these beautiful nuts inside are toxic. But they would take them and smash them up and put them into the water where the fish were, and it would actually paralyze the fish, and it would not poison their meat, but it would make the fish lethargic and they could easily catch them and it's against the law to do that now okay but that's just what people used to do so i think that's interesting thank you buddy okay and um by the way when you're done decorating those things bring them up and we'll we'll share but in just a few minutes all right so that's fascinating how the buckeye um the po it poisons the nervous system without spoiling it and the fish would then even even float on the top i forgot to say that so um, that's the Buckeye. And then another practical point is that it can be a perfectly edible plant, 
but it needs to be prepared properly. So for example, we spent a whole hour talking about poke and pokeweed I think is one of my top three favorite edible plants and yet it is so poisonous. And yet how does it get the nickname of the plant that saved the South during the Civil War if it's so poisonous? Well, today I made a pesto the guys are gonna love out of pokeweed and it was pokeweed that is actually, I boiled it and I rinsed it and I boiled it again and I rinsed it and I boiled it again and I rinsed it. And what happens is the toxins that are in those leaves are water soluble and so they can be rinsed out. I've told you I never waste anything. And I've told you in the past, if you're decocting burdock, for heaven's sakes, don't throw out the pot liquor, use it in your soup. But when you're dealing with pokeweed, do not use the pot liquor because that's poison because that goes into the water, out of the leaf, into the water. So you dump that out, rinse it really well. So you guys, you're gonna have to tell me what you think of the pesto I made for you today. It's really, really good. All right, so, that's, so it could be poisonous because it's not properly prepared. And there's some plants that you can just eat them as is. So this is the purslane, which is the highest in omega-3s of all the plants in the plant kingdom. This is a nutrient powerhouse. This is amazing. And I was so excited that um, Ben showed us that spurge is the, the poisonous lookalike for this because I have spurge all through my driveway. And it grows really, it hugs the ground and it's kind of hard to get up. This is a little plumper and not near as flat. It's flat because it kind of sprawls, but it's not flat, flat. I mean, that's flat. You guys have spurge in your garden too? Not in the garden, but in the walkways. In the walkways. Yeah, it likes my gravel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So make sure you eradicate those things. And it's so good to know. Another point is you need to know the plant at every single stage of its life. Just like, um, Amy, you've known your boys ever since they were born. And you can look at pictures of them and go, oh, that was when Ben was three. And that was when Ben was seven. And how on earth did Ben turn 10? Oh, my word. You know, so like you, we watch and we pay attention to the changes. And you can, you can look, probably look at baby pictures and see that Ben looked like Ben and the twins look like themselves now, but not at all the way they are now. They're like growing into little, into men, into young men. So um, knowing all the life cycles is super important as well. Okay. And so, and then it can become toxic because um, it matures. So here's a milkweed seed and these seed pods are one of my favorite vegetables. Have you ever tried these guys when they were just seed? Okay, we'll do it this summer. But when these are, after they flower and they turn into seed pods, they make a really, really delicious vegetable. And when they're just about an inch long and they're really firm, they're like the best potatoes you've ever tasted. And then when they get a little longer, they're cheese and they're like a mozzarella cheese stick. They've got the same texture, they're kind of sweet and you can put them on your lasagna or your pizza, which I do all the time. But when the seeds start to turn brown, the whole pod is now poisonous and the seeds are poisonous. So knowing the maturity of the plant is another caveat, which is so important. And so um, I will always try to give you a heads up about those things, but honestly, you need to learn these things for yourself. And, um, and just get out there, get off your screen, even off of watching uh, all these wonderful, there's so many wonderful videos out there on YouTube about foraging and there's wild blessings, but there's nothing that compares to doing it yourself and knowing what you've got on your land and knowing where all the plants are, not just to identify them, but to know how I can eat them and what parts can be eaten and what season and what part of the season can they be enjoyed. Most of the poisonings take place in the early spring when the leaves look similar, like the water hemlock looks similar to the Queen Anne's lace in the summer, I mean the early spring. But once the water hemlock has, or the poison hemlock has made blooms, the blooms are, are nowhere like this. They're really, really different. So you'll see that next week when we talk about that and grow in great detail. Okay, and then one more point and I'm gonna have you guys come in. Um, Okay, so moderation is important. Um, let's see, preparation required, dosage, preparation stage. Okay, we covered those practical points. And then the prevention, be 100% certain of what you're consuming. When in doubt, leave it out. Um, do it in moderation, avoid experimentation. Don't think, oh, this smells really good. So you know what, this smells like a carrot. And so I'm gonna eat it. 
I just found out this week that water hemlocks root smells like a carrot. Did you know that? I did not know that. That's crazy. You guys can stand here while I finish talking and then you can show. Um, and then, um, yeah, so the avoid experimentation. And I think, you know, especially like you guys are really confident in your identification, would you say? Yeah, because you've been doing it like forever, right? Like we know what an iceberg lettuce looks like and what a cabbage looks like. And you don't have to say, oh, which is which? You just know because you've got this connection in your brain, this groove in your brain. You've seen it so many times. And these guys have seen and eaten wild food plants for so long, you would never eat spurge. Right. And you would never eat poison ivy. Right. And would you walk in poison ivy? No. How did you get into poison ivy? Um, we were I playing in the woods in there because there were some, the people, well, like 17 kids next door were chasing us. <laughs> and you, and okay. okay, that's a really good point. So they're being chased okay. by 17 kids. <laughs> only really 10. Well, always only 10. Chased. Okay, he exaggerated. There was only 10, but they're being chased. And so therefore they're not paying attention and they ran right into poison ivy. Okay. All right, so, but you're looking good. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll talk about poison ivy next week and we'll get into great detail about how you can avoid it and also how you can identify it and how you can get better once you get it, okay? So then, um, organoleptics are called sensory awareness. And this is something where we've lost touch with all of our senses, but I'm gonna ask you to bring your, what are the five senses? Mm. Give me one of them. Sight. In Sight. And give me another one. Touch. Touch. Smell. Smell. Mm -mm. Hearing. What do we miss? Mm. Tasting. Tasting. Okay. Never taste. So in experimenting, never taste. But you can smell and you can touch. But even sometimes, remember the contact dermatitis? You, don't, you want to be even careful there. And I don't want you to be fearful. I just want you to be respectful. Okay? So are you guys afraid of the wild? No. no, their mommy has empowered them and has given them such a solid foundation. This is what you have done is you've reclaimed your heritage because for generations, we've always been in connection with nature and we've always been alert and aware of our surroundings. Yesterday, I was picking these beautiful butterfly weed flowers and I was so excited about them that I went rushing into the weeds to get them and I stopped myself. And I looked down at my feet and there was all this poison ivy. So I collected these like this because I wanted to be on the road and not getting into the poison ivy. So it's about being aware. So you don't need to be an expert. You just need to be an expert about the plants that you're using. So let's go ahead and you guys show us what you did. This is mine. What did you decorate it with? I decorated with... Bee balm and they don't know what they use. Black I Susan. That's so beautiful. That's did, too beautiful. I did too, but I put Thank lots of uh, around the a bee balm around the edges. Oh, and that's two, beautiful. And two black Susan petals in the middle. Very nice. I they look like fireworks. I decorated mine with four black eyed Susan petals. Okay, well we're gonna put a sparkler on yours because you're the birthday boy. Okay, but don't eat that till after lunch. Okay. Okay, and what did you do, Amy? Well, I guess I was inspired by Gideon because mine looks very similar to his. I used both the Minarda and the Black Eyes. And why didn't you put on any of the poisonous um, butterfly weed? You know, I'm just not in the mood to eat poison today. <laughs> you already did. Enough. Yes, I you already, already died once of poison. You already died once. You're so right. <laughs> That's enough times. Absolutely. Okay, well, we're going to say goodbye now, and thank you for joining us next week. Um, we are going to have so much of a deep dive into the Apiaceae family. And um, what do you want me to do, Jace? Keep talking? Okay. We are going to be going uh, into a slideshow where I can actually show you the stems and the leaves and the flowers and talk about these nuances because some of them are really uh, very similar. And it's important to know because there's so many wonderful things in that are edible that look like these poisonous lookalikes that you don't want to say, I'll never meet them because of my fear of these other ones. No, just know what you're dealing with. And it's like a counterfeit bill. If you study the real thing, then you can tell what is the fake. So not that poisonous plants are fakes by any means, but you know what I'm saying. So anyway, that will be what we do next week. And I'll let you know when my wild food um, Asian feast is going to be rescheduled for. 
and um, make sure you comment so you can get some garlic ramp salt, which is amazing. And it's a really good way to preserve ramps. This was from my April batch of ramps that I dehydrated. <clears throat> so um, God bless you all. And thank you for joining me. And make sure you post what you're eating this week so we can all rejoice. And don't forget, our verse is be careful then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. Thank you.